slide is a very, very different um, presentation. There's not a hell of a lot of science, engineering, or anything else. <clears throat> I only know enough science and engineering to be dangerous, actually. But um, I come from a um, very pragmatic background. I trained as a forest manager uh, for five years and then went into the uh, logging industry after that for the next six years and just about killed myself. So I thought I'd better use my education and get into a job that um, wasn't going to kill me. So um, around about 25 years ago, um, I uh, found a job in the uh, regional council. They were just coming out of catchment board days into um, into forming regional council. So um, I was uh, lucky or unlucky enough to um, score a job as a uh, system soil conservator. And my talk is really about um, the work that we did and how we sort of changed the hearts and minds of people on properties to um, carry out practices that uh, were probably environmentally friendly. And when I talk about environmentally friendly, it's, it's a wide range, a really wide scope of work that we did. It wasn't just looking at um, streams. We were looking at erosion on land. Uh, we were looking at biodiversity of uh, indigenous forests, uh, looking at the downstream effects from um, poor water quality, going into lake streams, and see what um, solutions we could come up with to um, affect the change. And really the basis of all our work was improvement of freshwater quality, but uh, probably the area that we had most impact was um, it was reducing the amount of uh, uh, soil or uh, soil material that was going into those through siltation, through erosion, through poor practices on farms, i.e. Um, animals on steep slopes for example. Uh, and rainfall don't mix too well together and the result was uh, sedimentation into our waterways. So what we had to do was, as I say, change the hearts and minds of, um, of farmers uh, through speaking with them and dealing with them uh, to change their management practices. Uh, there were, at the time that I started, there were uh, three soil conservators or assisted soil conservators throughout the Bay of Plenty. Uh, Laurie Donald was the other and we had um, one other in Rotorua, so there were three of us covering the whole of the Bay of Plenty. One advantage we had, I think, over what's happening now to affect those changes is um, before we got into the job, we actually had quite a wide uh, or broad range of experience uh, between us. Uh, myself, I came from sort of a... Um, I, I worked with a lot of heavy machinery, uh, and I've done a lot of, it wasn't just forestry work, I was interested in sort of cutting trees down and moving huge amounts of uh, earth with uh, as big a machinery as I could find, because that's what satisfied my ego at the time. Then we had Laurie, he worked in the, um, uh, the rivers and drainage and also the um, quarrying area. Uh, and then we had a guy who was called Nick, and he worked in the high country farming area. That was his uh, passion and his background. We all got brought together. So that, that, that was one advantage. We had a hell of a lot of experience. Before we actually started training in this job, we had probably about 10 years real experience behind us. And then we got into the job. One thing uh, that we had were good managers. Good managers trust people to do things, trust their uh, judgment, and they will guide you rather than direct you. That was, uh, so, so that was number two, we had good managers. The third thing is that we had a fair amount of money to play around with. And we had, um, uh, we had some pretty big projects that we had to um, embark on. This, the, this wasn't little stuff. We were working on what was called the Upper Kaituna Catchment Control Scheme. And that was uh, looking at the fencing of just about every watercourse in the Rotorua area. Annual budget was something like sort of six million dollars, which one or two of us had to spend in that year. The sort of work that we did was uh, things like, um, as I say, fencing of waterways, targeting steep areas that we're eroding, uh, planting in either forestry species or native species. The sort of annual uh, planting program was 300,000 natives, which we you know, had to manage. Uh, we had to get, we, we didn't even get tenders, we just found the best people we could to do the work. Um, there was something like um, 
annually fencing would be about 150 k's of fencing of waterways but all the time we had to negotiate with farmers where those fences were going to go where they were going to be placed um, and I've got some notes over there, but if I can remember, the best way to deal with people was, um, I'll, I'll have to grab them because it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite important, um, the, sort of, the sort of points that I make. The first thing, I've, I've got turning up. Now, turning up to me is like a sports game. When you turn up, you're prepared, you're re ready to go. You don't go there half-assed. You go there with an attitude that um, you have to know what you're there for. Prepare well. Know your client. And we used to do, you know, we used to, wouldn't say background checks, but we used to ask around, what is this guy like or what are these people like? Know what asset they have and come with a we can work together attitude rather than coming down in a, in a, a sort of top down or this is what you're going to do. So it was working together with them. Um, the other thing to note is that you know, you know you never speak down to a person. You always speak to the person, and um, you almost take a humble view uh, of what you want to achieve and what they would like to see as well. Um, the other thing I've got on here is experience. There is no substitute for experience, and experience. Um, it's, it's not only uh, what you know about the work, but it's how you work with people or deal with people. Uh, you've got to be, um, I suppose, know how they're going to respond in different situations. And um, it, 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 it even goes down to the way you dress when you go to a certain uh, area. Uh, for example, you don't want to turn up to a farm with sort of nice pointy shoes on and nice clothing. The farmer's going to expect you to walk over their property. And there were instances where I was dealing with um, some pretty sticky forestry issue uh, or issues, um, and, and they were to do with sort of um, iwi and other people as well. So I thought I'd dress in an appropriate manner, and I blended in with everybody else. <laughs> and that was just, you know, with my swan dry and my boots on. And then when they said, oh, this is the person you have to speak to, the mood changed immediately because you were, I suppose, you weren't there um, as an official, if you like, you were there as uh, one of those people. So that was, you know, that's, that's quite important, but obviously you don't go into a council meeting with that gear on, so that's what I say, you um, make sure you um, uh, dressed appropriately. Um, the, the other thing is that... Um, the customer, and you know, we always call them the customer. They uh, they have to know what you know, but if you don't know something about it, you don't bullshit. Basically, you will say, "I will go away and find out about that because I don't know," and that, that that's quite important. And uh, what that begins to do is it it, it, it gets confidence from the customer in you that um, you know certain things, but you're prepared to help them in other areas as well. Um, and also, the, um, all that type of stuff just um, puts them at ease, if you like. Uh, explaining what your role is and reassuring them uh, what you know and what you don't know is, um, is, is good, but you have to be firm when required as well. Probably one of the things I took out of the council while I was working there, even though I said no to a lot of people, we still came away as friends. And um, a lot of those people I still deal with, you know, to this day. And uh, it's actually put me in good stead for the job I'm doing at the moment, which is basically what I was doing when I was in council. Um, I'm a consultant, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately. Um, but I don't, yeah... I, I suppose one good thing about it is I left about, yeah, it's almost six years ago and I've never had to sort of I find work. It just finds me, if you like. And the, the, the clients are much the same people as I worked with, you know, quite a few years ago. Um, another thing that I've, I've uh, got down here is don't preempt the solution until you've heard both sides of the story. So... Uh, hear or listen to what the farmer's got to say and the um, best form of communication is actually listening. It's, it's, it's not 
you know, listen to what their concerns are and then see what you can offer to, um, to broker a solution, if that be the word. Uh, we were in a pretty unenviable, you know, position uh, because we were having to almost enforce uh, certain um, regulations onto people and um, we were, as I say, uh, the, you know, the above that I've just talked about helped us a hell of a lot. Um, yeah, the other thing is that I've, I've, um, I wasn't super passionate about water, but 99% um, of what I do now impacts on fresh water. It's, 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 it's you know, whether it's forestry. The reason I'm, I, I got involved uh, with forestry through the council was because of my experience. The reason why I was involved was because forestry was impacting on water quality. And um, I just felt that the solutions that I was, um, uh, I was sort of coming up with weren't necessarily for the sake of uh, fresh water, it's because the trees shouldn't be there. So, you know, but um, still today, uh, those sort of solutions I'm working with, with foresters and land management people and um, private landowners is exactly the same. And uh, much the same um, attitude is taken, you know, um, when we, um, when I go out to a job and, and deal with people. Um, probably one of the good, if you saw the slides about the Bay of Plenty of water quality, it isn't all perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than the rest of the country. Um, one of the things we are fortunate with is that the countryside wasn't raked as badly as, as some of the other hill country in the rest of the country. And a lot of that blue you saw on there was because of the afforestation that had been undertaken, for good or for bad, on the lands that it was on. Um, so we were quite lucky in that um, what we were doing on the land in the Bay of Plenty area was mainly preventative or looking at solutions before uh, bad things happened. And bad things, in our perspective, was losing a whole uh, hillside into a stream and then that... Um, that water finding its way into a lake or uh, uh, affecting a fishery of some sort uh, or water quality. Um, so that's, that's a sort of a bit of a brief. Um, what I'm doing now, as I say, is pretty much the same as what I did before. And I'll just sort of give you an example of um, a farmer came to me a couple of days ago. His stream had, had, had um, suffered yeah, quite a bad um, erosion uh, problem. And um, when I listened to him, I went to the rules or policy and I looked at, the, looked at what sort of solutions um, I could come up with. And what I came up with was on two pieces of A4 paper that are drawn. I've got the drawing over there. And, and, and it is a drawing which I will take to him and say, you can build this. Um, I trust... I, I, I am pretty... Um, uh, confident that it will work because we've built so much, you know, so many of these structures um, in these situations before. Uh, the other thing is that it will be uh, permitted you know, within reason, and that's the other thing is that there's too much, to a certain extent, too much black and white in policy that we have at the moment. There's a big grey area there uh, where people have to be allowed to. I suppose um, use their discretion, and that includes councils as well. And one thing that we did a hell of a lot at, um, at the council was um, work in what we call the grey area. Without getting too many engineers, uh, other consultants, etc., etc., involved in a process which, to a certain extent, was very common sense. Um, and that is the. Um, that's, that's really all I wanted to talk about. It was just to, um, I suppose, uh, relay my experiences and what I did now is what I'm still doing today um, with the same people, effectively, except a lot of them have grown up. Okay, so thank you very much.